Britain became involved with the First World War on the 4th of August and the Fusiliers were one of the first battalions that were part of the First World War. The 4th Battalion was introduced to the war from the August it began. Sergeant William Osborne kept a diary whilst he was in action on the front lines with the 4th Battalion, the Royal Fusiliers, from the beginning of the First World War. Osborne's diary informs us about what life was like in the trenches. These entries are composed of short sentences, however, they are an in-depth account whereas the official war diary recorded only the official statistics and reports about what was happening. The 23rd of August 1914 was an important date as it was when the Battle of Mons started. However, the war diary only states that they arrived at Tipley and beer back there until 2am, whilst Osborne's diary tells us that they had no letters much to look forward to, orders to move at 15 minutes notice, artillery fire started all round, retired about f- 4 miles and beer back in some private grounds. Yet, we know that both Maurice Deese and Sidney Godley received the first two Victoria Crosses of the First World War for their bravery in action on this date. Lieutenant Deese was awarded the Victoria Cross for fighting until his last breath. Deese's citation was written by Lieutenant Steele to recommend him for a Victoria Cross award for his bravery. 23rd August, Deese was in command of the machine guns with the 9th Platoon, who were defending a br- the bridge at Nimi. On the attack developing at the bridge, he was one of the first to be hit, somewhere, somewhere about the knee. He continued to direct the fire of his guns, although obviously in great pain, until he was hit again, this time somewhere in the body, after which he remained for a short time under cover. Shortly afterwards, the machine gunner, having been shot, Dees asked me why the guns were not firing, and insisted on crawling to the gun emplacement in order to control the fire. Another man, having taken the place of the man who was shot, he then received a third wound, which incapacitated him, and I am of the opinion that he received other wounds, but on this point I cannot speak definitely. Lieutenant Steele. Godley's citation was also written by Lieutenant Steele to recommend him for a Victoria Cross award, as he displayed great bravery whilst they were under fire. In the defence of Burnaby Bridge near Nimi, 23rd August 1914, this afternoon, Private Godley of B Company showed particular heroism in his management of the machine gun. Lieutenant Dees having been severely wounded and each machine gunner then was shot, I called Private Godley to me in the firing line of the bridge and under an extreme heavy fire, he had to remove three dead bodies and turned to a machine gun in the right under a most deadly fire. This he did and not a shot did he fire except as I directed him and the utmost coolness until irret- irretrievably damaged and he was shot in the head. He then left the firing line and was under orders to go to the rear, Lieutenant Steele. Many lost their lives within the first few weeks and their bravery for this was commemorated as their families received a personalised penny as recognition. Harry Carter fought with the 4th Battalion of the Fusiliers. He died fighting on the 19th of September 1914. His family requested a death penny for him which came with a commemorative scroll. Carter's family also received a personal letter from someone who knew him which informed them of his death. The commemorative scroll recites that he whom this scroll commemorates was numbered among those who at King and Quantry left all that was dear to them, endured hardness, faced danger and finally passed out of sight of men by the path of duty and self-sacrifice, giving up on their own time so that others might live in freedom. Let those who come after see to it that his name be not forgotten. Whilst his personal letter reads, Dear Sir, it is with the deepest regret that I have to inform you that your son, Private Harry Carter, was killed in action on September 19th. The delay in notifying you is due to all the officers of the company being either killed or wounded. I wish to offer you my sincere sympathy in your loss, and I can assure you that your son is greatly missed by those who knew him. He died at his post and was buried near Havering Court by Rev- the Reverend E. N. Mellish, the regiment chaplain, yours faithful. Faithfully, Lieutenant R. C. Colson. The scroll would have been a more general message which was sent along with every death penny, whereas the letter was personally written by someone who was in the same battalion which would have made the message more personal for the family who received it. All of these soldiers displayed great heroism whilst fighting on the front lines with the 4th Battalion Royal Fusiliers during the First World War. While some of them were awarded for their bravery with the Victoria Cross, others received personal letters and a commemorative scroll.